Hello, this is Summer Esso, blogger and podcaster at fashajourney.com, which is my honest and independent chronicle of over three years of working with my fascia, with myofascial tools like the fascia blasters, cupping, skin pulling, skin rolling, you name it, I've done it to my fascia. <laughs> So in the very last episode, I talked about how I built my do-it-yourself, at-home, makeshift sauna using heat lamps. And what I'm going to do today is just walk you through that process. For every podcast that I make, there is an associated blog post. The blog post has, in this case, it's really cool. I put up how-to videos. There's links to everything that you would need to build your own sauna. There are pictures. You can see all kind of stuff there. So there's a link to the blog post in the description for this podcast. Okay, so here's how you build it. I'm going to try to explain it. I know this isn't the most podcast suitable subject, but I decided to just give it a try. I'm going to follow the blog post. So the first thing that you need is some kind of platform to clamp the lights onto. I just went to Home Depot and I just walked up and down the aisles trying to find something. <laughs> I didn't know if it would be like a wire shelf type thing or what it would be. I looked into things that go over a toilet. Um, you're really going to have to rely on your own creativity to find something to fit the space. Before I found something, I used to clamp them to the towel rack and also the towel rack that's on my shower. And I put a picture in the blog post of my first incarnation of this whole setup where I did that, but I decided I wanted something dedicated to clamp them onto so I could have less limitation on where I placed the bulbs. I wanted to be able to place them where I wanted, and so I ended up buying a steel fence gate. It was annoyingly expensive for what it was, which is just like a white gate, but it's got some weight to it and I felt like it was something solid that I could clamp these lights onto. I didn't want something that might fall down or tip over or be unsteady in any way. So this worked out really well for me even though it was 60 bucks at the time. It's $70 now. <laughs> uh, but I put a link to that in the blog. But I really encourage you to use your own creativity. I think a wire rack of some kind could work. A shelf maybe I mean you are creative people and you can figure this out the next thing you're gonna need is a brooder clamp light that's what they're called you know those kind of like very utilitarian clamp lights they're an aluminum round housing that you put a bulb inside of and then you have a clamp attached to it so you can kind of adjust the light you clamp it onto something and then you can adjust where the light points. So I always associate them in like my dad's garage, you know, working on for working on things. If you are a young artist, you probably use this as your lighting kit for videography, etc. So you know what I'm talking about. So a few things about the brooder clamp light. Very important. First thing is you have to make sure that it is rated for up to 300 watts. So your bulbs are only going to be 250 watts, but you want this clamp light to be rated for 300 watts. And the way you are going to know that you absolutely got the right one is that the base that you screw the bulb into is going to be ceramic, right? You don't want the plastic one. You need the ceramic one because you're going to be running so much power and heat through these. The other thing is that the clamps are not all the same, okay? <laughs> This is how much I love you. I went on a wild goose chase looking for the exact clamp that I like because some of the clamps are flimsy, quite frankly, and you don't want something flimsy. You're going to want something sturdy here. We're talking about very hot lights. You want them to stay where you clamp them. And so there's a really big difference. I had to actually call the manufacturer. <laughs> which is Bayco, by the way, but that's going to get you nowhere because Bayco makes a very special version only for Home Depot. So I put the link for that into the blog post. So you definitely want to check that out and see what I'm talking about, about needing a sturdy clamp. And I told you exactly where to get them. The clamp light, $13.98 for one of those. So it's very important. 
Just don't get the cheap one, guys. The cheap one sucks. I had to buy it a couple times and I hate it. I replaced it. So you're going to want the nice clamps. See, aren't you glad I went first to figure out these minutia? <laughs> There is one thing about the Bruder clamp lights is that if you move them around a lot, the mechanism by which it moves can get bald and you can kind of wear off the tread on it and it'll stop working. So that's one thing. But if you just get them in a good spot and you don't move them around a lot, you'll be fine. Okay, now let's talk about the bulbs because the bulbs are very important too and not all bulbs are created equal. I have a favorite. I have an absolute favorite, and that's the Philips 250-watt incandescent R40 red heat lamp light bulbs, and they're $11.96. You can't get them at Home Depot in the store anymore. You have to order them online through Home Depot, and you can probably search and find them online elsewhere as well. I love this light because it is hotter than others that I've used. Something super cool about these bulbs is that they last for years. They never go out. So that's a one-time investment. If you're like really into healthcare, you're going to see bulbs online that cost a lot of money. There's one called the Therabulb. I bought it. I just looked it up and it's saying it's $38. So I bought one of these. I got scammed, you guys. It isn't as hot as the Philips bulbs that I love. And I notice no other difference. It just kind of sucks. I hate it. So I'm going to tell you where the origin for this idea came from, which is that when I was looking online, I noticed that there's this there's this brand. When you're looking, you're going to find it. It's called Sauna Space. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculously overpriced. I'm just I can't get into it. I can't get into anything that is that overpriced. It's like three thousand dollars for a mount that they mount you know, four bulbs on. And not only that, but they have bulbs on here that cost like $100. They have the Thermalite, which is a bulb, and it's $89.99. What are they even talking about? That's so crazy. It's fine. If you want to spend a lot of money, more power to you. But I can't get into it. I don't like it. I like a good value. <laughs> there's sauna space there's another option it's pretty goofy i put a link to it on the blog post it has five bulbs on a stand and they're movable they're mobile you can move them around and position them in different ways actually if it wasn't so ugly and i had the space i, I might be kind of into it it's 300 dollars it holds five bulbs but the bulbs can only be 150 watts versus the 250 watts that i'm using so I guess I wouldn't use it. It is really silly looking. And ever since I clicked the link, Google thinks that I really want one. So I see this goofy thing all the time. So that's all. I put I put them together. I clamp them onto my little fence thing. And then I have got a hot sauna. I plug them all into a power strip and I'm good to go. For my sauna, which has kind of more bulbs than you need, I... I invested a little over $200 into this. And the really cool thing is that those are all one-time expenses. I don't need to buy them again. Everything lasts for a long time. And it's true. Electricity is an expense that needs to be factored in. If you're spending an extra $50 a month on your electric bill, and that's an ongoing cost, that's definitely something to think about. I was kind of surprised that this it required a whole separate post, but I'm excited. I'm excited to see what your fascia blasting heat source is. If you have any creative ways that you've solved that problem, get in touch with me. I can always be reached on my DMs on Instagram. That's where most people reach me. My Instagram is fascia journey, all one word. I can, of course, be reached through my website, fasciajourney.com. And this completes another episode of the Fascia Journey podcast. Thank you for listening. My name is Summer Essen. Yeah.